Spain to go. I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. No kizzy. Yeah, I can't see you today. Run around town with a four o'clock. Like I've got that beam today. Yeah, you got good aim. Hit you. All right, today we got Spain the Goat jumping off the porch with us today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's popping with y'all? What's going on, gang? Nothing much, man. You know what I'm saying? Just pop back out to ATL. I've been in LA for a while. For sure. It's a pleasure to have you back here in Atlanta with us, gang. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So tell us, for those who didn't know, where are you from originally? Uh, I'm originally from like Zone 5, so you know, like around Midtown, around there. Then when, was like five, when I was like five, me and my uh, parents and my brother, we moved. I was like Cobb County. And I've been there like ever since, pretty much. For sure. So when did you dip out to LA? When I was, uh, what, 18. Yeah, when I was 18. Cause like, I had been making music. Like I've been making music for a while. I was in band. I played drums when I was five, all that. But um, life, was, it just wasn't what I wanted it to be. And I wasn't going to do the school route. So I went to LA, 18, and I just turned 21 yesterday. And I, I just came back. So it was like two years, two and a half years, but I've been back and forth now. For sure. So how would you describe your childhood coming up? Um, so I had both my parents in my life. I still got both my parents in my life to this day. Um, that's a blessing. A lot of people don't have that, especially in the black community. But um, really, we was like in the suburbs because we moved from Atlanta to get away from certain stuff. Because like we, we, we was around Midtown, but you know, everybody that live in Atlanta know like there are certain parts of everywhere that's the bad part. So we, we try to just get away from anything. We go to the suburbs and everybody got a certain amount of money and stuff, but we don't, you know what I'm saying? So trying to keep up with people that was real suburban, like really been there, done that, like their whole family got bread or whatever. That was like kind of competing with them at first. It was messed up a little bit until like I got older. I was able to do stuff for myself. For sure. How would you describe high school? <sighs> high school, high school for me, I ain't gonna lie, it wasn't even like a, a high school experience for me, like, like as far as normally. Not like me getting in trouble or anything. I just didn't really go to school like that. Like I'd get on the bus, but I wouldn't be at school for real. And like nobody knew for like all through like three years until I was a senior. So I was doing other stuff, bro. I was doing life school, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't even really in high school for real like that. For sure. What do you think about school? I think school, it, it, it's, it's a person by person basis. It's like, it's not for everybody. And right now they're trying to, they trying to make it uh, four more years for, for school. They trying to make it four more years. I mean, Biden, but I don't think that we don't, I don't think we need that. I think we should do it more off of a, a trade basis. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you want to do, whatever you're interested in, you go into that. You know what I'm saying? Like, by the time you get into high school, halfway through high school, you already know what you're trying to do. They just got everybody on a certain system. You got to learn this, learn that, and turn you into a, to a worker. You know what I'm saying? But I'm an, advocate, I'm an advocate for that not being the, the route, like, all the way. Like, it's for some people, but it's not for everybody. For sure. Do you think school affected your mindset today? Big time. Like, big time. I wouldn't have the business mindset that I have if I didn't like think of school the way I do now, I'd probably be working somewhere. Like I'd probably be working somewhere doing what everybody else is doing. But like I seen early, like from a different perspective, like I wasn't rocking with it. So they put me in a different mindset. For sure. Talk about losing almost 75 pounds after high school. Oh yeah. I was, bro, I was a chunky dude. Like a lot of people that know me too, like, I was a chunky dude. Like even when I went to LA when I was 18, that was like right when I went to LA. It's like I stopped doing school. Like, I, I quit my job and I just left. Like I just went to LA and I was, I like, I like two, 240, man. You know, I was like 240, bro. But then out in LA, I'm walking everywhere. Couldn't get no Uber and had no car. You know what I'm saying? I'm just uh, walking everywhere, you know what I'm saying? And not really eating like that for real. I mean, ain't had no bread like that. I'm making it do what I gotta do. 
You know what I'm saying? Well, I'll make you a beat. You know what I'm saying? Let me sleep on your couch for the next two days. Stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So after a while, I started to see a little stuff like shed my weight. And then like by the time I met bruh, he was he already on some football stuff. It's my man Sheesh, you know what I'm saying? Producer, artist, all that. Uh, I managed him as well. But um, I met him. He was already on his football stuff and all that. So we walking everywhere anyway. You know what I'm saying? I'm just with bruh. I'm trying to keep up with bruh. So eventually I, I lost all that weight. I came back to Atlanta, I was like a different person, nobody even knew, like, I could walk past them, like, I just walked past them and they wouldn't know it was me, it was mad weird. That's crazy. Why do you think health is important? Because your body, you only get one, you, know, you literally only get one. And, and as far as like your food intake and what you eat, like you are what you eat, you know, that's a real statement as well, so like, Whatever you eat and however you take care of your body, that's how you're going to end up feeling, you know what I'm saying, for the next two days, you know what I'm saying, people eat a lot of fatty stuff, do whatever, and the next two days, you're like, I feel crazy, I don't know why, like, but you've been eating fast food for the past two days, what do you mean, you know what I'm saying, so, and, 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 and back to you only get one body, your, your immune system can only take so much, you know what I'm saying, going back to back, you know what I'm saying, like fixing stuff, because that's what you do when you're young, you know what I'm saying, you do, you make your mistakes, your body tell you what, you what it don't like, you don't do it again, your body fix it. But when you get older, and that's why older people always tell you, hey, don't do what I do, you know, you're going to end up like this, you know, that's a real fact, okay. especially in the black community. Again. For sure. Why do you think there's a health problem in the black community? Because the way we eat, that's the main part. That's the main part is the way we eat. The food, and it's not necessarily all the way our fault because like, uh, we, was giving, we was giving scraps early, but we made do, well, you know what I'm saying? Like we made a food that everybody want to eat now, not even really knowing that it derived from scraps. You know what I'm saying? Soul food, it literally derived from scraps. People don't even know because it's so good, but like it's fatty, it's like, that's why it tastes so good. It's straight pig, all that. I don't even eat pork no more. I haven't eaten bacon, nothing like that, pork at all for a whole year now. And like now that I smell it, it just smells rancid now to me. So like I know something wrong with it. That's crazy. When did you say you started making music? So like making traditional music, I was like five. I played drums. I started playing African drums, like djembes and dunams. Um, one of my main teachers, uh, Samba Diallo, he's from Cote d'Ivoire, that's the Ivory Coast. And um, he dances as well, so like, and he really taught me like rhythms, you know what I'm saying, all that. And I started playing in church originally, but I started recording music or making beats and stuff like that when I was like 10, uh, like 10 years old. I got in trouble for something and I was in the crib on punishment. Nobody there, because both my parents work. My brother, he older, so he at school. You know what I'm saying? I, I'd be at the crib earlier than him. I'm on punishment, I can't go outside, I'm doing nothing. I downloaded FL Studio on a computer, started making beats, and that's how I started, at like 10. For sure. How did you get your rap name? Um, so, the area that I'm from, they call it Spain. Like, the area that I moved to after Atlanta, they call it Spain, and like, uh, there's another artist that's like, you know what I'm saying, doing stuff. He got a, a interview with DJ Small Eyes. He's doing a lot of stuff like underground, his name, 3AG Pilot. But like me and him was the only people, you know what I'm saying, doing stuff in the area. And I didn't even have no name. I was just making beats for people in the area, you know what I'm saying. I ain't had no name, no beat tag, nothing. And then I was on the back porch smoking with my mans. He said, yo, what's your rap name? What's your producer name? You gotta do this, you gotta do this for Spain, but you gotta put on. And I just looked up, I was like, yeah, that's my name, Young Spain. And that was the original name, it was Young Spain. And then uh, after a while, making beats and engineering, recording people was like my main thing. Like every time I send something back to somebody, send a song back to them, mix their vocals, they recorded it in your room. They be like, damn, bro, you the GOAT, bro, you the GOAT, bro. This just sound like I recorded it in down Mean Street or something, like, you know what I'm saying, Five Studio. And then, um, so that's why I just put that, I just put that in the end. Cause I didn't want to be no young, little, something like that. You know what I'm saying? That, For that, sure. That. Who would you list as your producer influences? Um, definitely, definitely Kanye West. 
that's the that's the first part and that's where i get like my arrangement from as far as when i make my beats and how it should sound you know what i'm saying like going from beginning to end intro all that kanye west and then uh i would say south side for sure lex luger and uh skrillex okay i love melodies i love crazy melodies yeah that's about it do you prefer to rap on your beats or other producers beats oh that's a great question it just depends it depends it depends because like the beat it has to be something that I can't make or I feel like I would have to work hard to really make this beat, then I, I want to use those beats. And most of the time those beats are very hard and that's like with producers, you make a lot of fire beats out of a hundred, you may make two or three beats that are like wild that you're like, I don't even know how I made this. And those are the type of beats that I want to use that's not my own. Any other beat, I'm using my own beat because I can, I, you know what I'm saying, I could put my own idea out. For sure. How did you get into artist management? I had a whole bunch of friends on the internet and just around me that rapped or made beats, you know what I'm saying? And I was like in a further position than all of them at any given moment, even if they had more followers than me or money, anything. As far as notoriety, I was like always kind of farther them as far as the business and how it looked it always looked real professional and so they didn't know how to do a lot of stuff like register their music you know what i'm saying distribute it how to talk to people stuff like that so i just started talking to people on behalf of people for real. that's where it really started like um oh somebody trying to talk to me they real like famous or what i don't even know what to say bro for real and i was like all right just tell them i'm your manager and i'm gonna just tell them what you want to do and so that's where that started. For sure. Who are some of the artists you're managing right now? Uh, so I got uh, PP Cocaine. Uh, she's signed to Columbia Records. Next Youngin. Uh, she's signed to me, uh, Ashley Inc. Distributed by Create. Uh, my boy Shishman. Um, he released as a producer and an artist. Um, I got my boy Young Sheen, that's my little, that's my little dog in high school. He dropped on the tape today, actually. Got my boy Boom, he also my young dog, he out in Philly. Me and him just dropped the tape like a week ago called Three Peat. We got some on there with Energy Beats, he made some on there. Um, also got Yego, my boy Yego. He, we just did a show with iHeartRadio about a week ago. And I got 36 racks, he from out here. And, but that's really like my brother for real. Like we started, we started this joint together. Like we just wanted to stamp something for real. It was just me and him in the crib recording on the phone. Okay, and then yeah, for it's, sure. it's, a, it's a few more too. I also got um, I don't manage him for real, for real. He on his own stuff, but we just work together. But my boy Nest the Kid, um, we uh, he just we dropped uh, his song Famous. We just collabed on like the marketing and all that. We got a million streams on that, John, about two, three months, easy. We got this new song, finna drop, you know what I'm saying? Doubt Me, finna drop, uh, I think that's dropping tomorrow. Yep, dropping tomorrow. So, we just working heavily. For sure. Is it hard to promote so many artists at once with a large clientele roster like that? Um, at first glance, yes, it is, because all the artists don't have the same demographic but at the same time, what a lot of people don't understand is if you automate your system, a lot of this stuff is taken out of your hands. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't specify a lot of this stuff. You just know that you need to do this, 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 and this. Like, you know the steps you need to take. Just don't say what you're going to exactly do and just apply that to all the artists. And then you have different parts in there that's different for all of them. You know what I'm saying? You just have to have all of that written down. And you have a team of people that could uh, push that through too. No, for sure. Talk to us about your label, Ash and Ink. Bet, bet, bet. So my label, Ash and Ink, um, the motto is burning the norm. And a lot of artists are signing like crazy deals, like just cause they have to. 
You know what I'm saying? Like they have to sign crazy deals because nobody else is offering them deals and they don't know what their next move is gonna, gonna be, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of times I like to talk to artists and I tell them up front, you know what I'm saying? What are you being offered, whatever, whatever. And I'm gonna give you something better than that just off, just off rip. And you always keep the masters every single time. You know, you always keep the master every single time. And it's really you doing you, but I just amplify it. And it, it's, it's very transparent too. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, I, I don't like how the industry is right now where artists are like kind of sucking up to labels. Like they made like $17 billion bro, last year. And the average artist is getting 12% of that. That don't make no sense to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we're just trying to change that. Straight up. What would you say are some of your goals from your label? Um, so, the, the, the first goal that I really want to get is um, we have Create Music Group on good distribution, you know what I'm saying? And they're always going to be there. They're a company that's always going to be there. Whether you get a joint venture with somebody else or not, you can always work with them. But I want to really get a full team behind my label. You know, not a full joint venture, but something, um, something where I can use different tools from a label, you know what I'm saying? Whether I need radio, you know what I'm saying, whether I need uh, social marketing, stuff like that. I just want the specifics, you know what I'm saying, and we could work out a good split like that. That's the first thing I want to happen. And then after that, I just wanna, I just wanna get my studio in place. I have already, you know what I'm saying, a studio. It's uh, Ashton Recording Studios, but um, we're down right now because you know, COVID crazy, bro. COVID is wild. Like, that's why I came back to Atlanta. It's way easier out here, you know what I'm saying, to do that. And I feel like it's a lot of hungry artists out here too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of artists that's blowing up. So if I feel like my label is to burn the norm and, you know what I'm saying, blow up some artists and give them good deals that would sign a bad deal, Atlanta. this would be the perfect place to do it. Nah, for sure. If someone is an artist and a label owner, if their artists are further than them, could that affect the relationship tremendously between the two? Mm, that's a great question. It, it, it could, but it's all about how you play it, and it's all about how that artist and that, that label owner slash artist met each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of times, these artists, they started, like, they started with each other, but one be bigger, so they just say they signed this person when really that's, you know, that's, just, that's just their mans, you know what I'm saying? They just trying to put them on for real. Or it could be they really blew up. They met them when they blew up, they didn't know nothing about them, signed them, blew them up. You know what I'm saying? That's, a diff that's two different situations. Yeah. And you have to look at those situations very differently. And, and it's also about that label owner, how much pride that person has because it doesn't matter how big your artist gets. If you and your artist have a good relationship and that artist is a good person just like you a good person in an ideal situation, that, art, that artist that's your artist supposedly bigger than you is going to promote you. Same way, other way around if you was bigger than them. So it's, it's, it's situational. But most of the time, I don't, it, I don't think it affects it tremendously. I think there's bumps, but I, I think most of the time you could work it out. No, stress for real. What is it like to own a successful business at the age of 21? It's great. Basically proves me right. Like, I don't even want to like be that type of person. But like when I was in school, like I never like was in school for real. But when I did go and I was in, in class, they would try to like pick on me because I don't be in class. But I'd be getting all my answers right because I'm not stupid. I'm very intelligent. So. They, they be like not understanding, like what the heck, you know what I'm saying? So they like to pick on me a lot. But when I came out to LA, came back to Atlanta, everybody's face was a little different. But I'm not a real braggable person, you know what I'm saying? I'm not that, I'm not that. So I just keep it to myself. It just feel good, you know what I'm saying? Good. 
Talk to us about being managed by Solomon Sounds, the same manager of the late XXX Testosterone. Man, it's fire. Because uh, the same way he's helping me grow, I get to see him grow. Because like when he first started managing me, he wasn't helping run Capitol Records. But now he is, you know what I'm saying? And he black. So I, like he's helping me, a black producer slash artist, label owner, get opportunities. And he hadn't even had that great, super big opportunity. He helped me start my label, and now he's helping somebody to help their label. That's an old one, you know what I'm saying? So I, I know like he's out, like he for the people for real. So and I also um, know he's real good with working with people that's not necessarily really big in the industry because my other manager, uh, Johnny Kites, with Flying Kites Management. Um, he mostly does like EDM, but he just wanted to venture out and uh, rap. And he was helping me like do shows and stuff like that at first out in Cali. And like, he's a super hard worker. They work good together, you know what I'm saying? We hop on phone calls and they hash stuff out, you know what I'm saying? Anything Solomon don't necessarily know about that's something brand new, Johnny on it, you know what I'm saying? Something that Johnny need to know, Solomon telling them like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? We gotta do it like this, boom, boom, boom. So it's a perfect mesh. I feel that. Talk to us about being signed to Tim Blacksmith. Oh, it's fire. Like, I got a super good deal, too. Like, I've talked about it before, like, on YouTube, uh, I think once in the interview, but I got a real good deal. And, like, he's helping me start my label, you know what I'm saying? Same kind of thing that's going on with Solomon. You know what I'm saying? Solomon was more of, like, you know what I'm saying, a brother, like, you know what I'm saying, OG mentor, and then he introduced me to Tim, and you know what I'm saying, he's worked with Beyonce, Rihanna, Fifth Harmony, Neo, you know what I'm saying, he, Katy Perry, and legendary people, you know what I'm saying, so soon as we started working, he got me in his studio, and I'm working with Katy Perry producers, super fire, like, I never made music the way that they was making music too, so it was putting me in a different, you know what I'm saying, a different world, you know what I'm saying? I talked to him about sync, you know what I'm saying? Getting into movies, all of that stuff. Is that's, that's, what, that's what a label is, you know what I'm saying? You can't just make music. You gotta bring everything into entertainment. And like, he's helping me do that. For sure. What can you tell us about your new project, Goat Status? Man, this project's been a, a real emotional and long process, because I've been real been back on like the type of music that I want to make. Um, I haven't dropped a lot of music because I've like been making beats, you know what I'm saying? I'm a producer, manager. I've been doing a lot of stuff, you know what I'm saying? I've been, dro been dropping my own music. And everybody's dropping like trash versions of music that I could have dropped two years ago, three years ago, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it just like was really like making me mad for a while. So like now, like if I drop a song, it's just like, dang, bro, this sound like this person, but I got project files. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I got songs from like a while back sound that sounded like people, but like, I can't even say I made it first because this person may have a certain amount of notoriety. But when I drop it, I think people will be able to hear the difference. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it, they're old songs too. Like, I, none of these songs are new. They're old songs. Uh, <laughs> so you're going to be able to hear like, the, the difference in like how I flow on these beats, you know what I'm saying? Like, for sure. It'd be real different. How would you describe the industry for artists and producers who don't really know about the business? <sighs> oh, there's way more layers to this genre than you think, bro. Like, way more layers, bro. You can't just think about the music part. You gotta think about the music, but you also gotta think about um, politics because in especially rap music there's so much politics bro like it's, it's it's really the worst that you have to think about that but you have to think about that you know what i'm saying like how you how you talk to people who you talk to who you try to talk to how you try to talk to them you know what i'm saying stuff like that when you get into the room with this person if they in this certain mood they automatically not rocking with you so the next time you see them they just gonna remember they was in the mood that when they seen you but they ain't had nothing to do with you and now you missed out on that opportunity you gotta think about stuff like that you can't take it to heart like it's it's a whole lot of layers to this stuff 
Um, it's a lot of stuff you don't know about. And you gotta be real business savvy. You gotta look into your business, do your research for real, have all your collections done up, and don't sell your masters, bro. For you sure. know, you know you heard that a thousand times, but don't don't sell your masters, bro, for real. What features have you been working on? Ooh, lately, bro, for the past like six months, I've been working with uh, uh, I got Chris King, um, part of fourteen hundred. Been working with uh, Buddha Bands. I got a feature with uh, K Swab too. They all fourteen hundred. Um, I also got a feature from D Savage. And, and bro, really fire too, bro. Like I watched him walk that John down in the studio. Like, and Chris King, I watched them both walk the feature down in the studio on some like on some different stuff. Like it was fire. And Chris recorded himself. It was, I ain't gonna lie, it was fire. But uh, Savage, I, like. When we, I, I was listening to this music like before, like you know what I'm saying, on some SoundCloud days, and to like work with bruh, and he was so cool, you know what I'm saying, genuine. Like, it, it was, it meant a lot, cause a lot of people in this industry are fake, like super fake, bro. Nah, that's the real. What do you think about the state of the industry right now? I think everybody doing stuff for views and, and numbers. They're not doing stuff for longevity, they're doing it for the first pop. And like, that's the first thing I tell artists that I like work with or try to manage them or something. I tell them that we're working for the long run and we're not working to get this little bitty hit right here. You're not about to do nothing stupid, nothing crazy to try to get your name up. Uh, you know what I'm saying? A million people see you right now for something dumb, but that's what they remember you for, something dumb. So how are you gonna take this million people and convert it to something positive? to make you some money, you know what I'm saying? That's a whole step after when you could blow yourself up the organic way the first time. And that's what they remember you by. You're just going up from there. For sure. What do you want to see happen in the industry? I want to see, I want to see these labels completely change. Like, I want to see like a, I want to, I don't know, bro. Like, I can't even explain it, but like, Everybody, everybody sees it and they know what's going on. Like this, the labels are like really going 30, bro. Like they're wilding on these artists, like 12%, bro. Like 12%, that's crazy. Make different factions for different scales of artists. You know what I'm saying? Cause like they're only going for you when you get a certain amount and then they take it from you when you can have you can have building artists, you know what I'm saying? You can go down to the underground and build some artists organically and show the world that you're building them organically instead of like doing this this industry plant stuff, cap, you know what I'm saying, this cap rap stuff, building them, acting like it's organic when we see it's not, and then oh snap, they got a number one song. Like right. this was you know, it's crazy. That's real, I like that one. What else are you working on right now? Um, right now, I'm working on getting underground shows more popular. I just want to do a lot of pop-up um, shows with sponsored by anybody. Like, if you comment under this YouTube video if you want to do a show, and I will respond to you. Like, type stuff and anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, stamp my name on it, my label, and we stamp your stuff on there, and we just get a lot of underground artists up. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of like unfound artists that are super fire and also have good stage performance like they, their stage presence is real good and that's the big part of rap music as well so i just want to showcase that for sure any last words and shout outs uh yeah i just want to shout out my girlfriend satin you know what i'm saying i want to shout out my boy sheesh you feel me when i flew out to la i i literally i literally didn't know what the hell was finna happen? I want to shout out my boy Tyrone. He was the first um, person to help me out when I went to LA. My boy Tyrone Laurent, and he just dropped a song with uh, Josiah, Deserve the music video. And um, I stayed with Bruh as soon as I touched down, and I had to make more friends. And this is my my second friend that I met, and like we've been me Tyrone, bro, we've been cool this like ever since. You know what I'm saying? Dropping music, going crazy. Yeah, that's about it. We just about to keep working. For sure. Yes, sir. All right, Spain to go. We appreciate you having me today, gang. Yes, sir. Thank you, bro. For sure.
Yeah, I can't see you today. Run around town with a four o'clock. I got that beam today. Young nigga got good aim. Hit you in your spleen today. Young